Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your mercies and your grace that are everlasting. We thank you for your goodness and your kindness that, Lord, you will fulfill what you desire to fulfill from the beginning. Father, may your will be done now and eternally in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, good morning, everybody. You may be seated. Uh, our God is good and uh, his mercies endure forever. And I am glad you're all here and you're still fighting on the good fight. Uh, remember, no sacrifice comes easy. But after every sacrifice, there is always victory. Uh, whoever does not sacrifice, sacrifices their future. But whoever sacrifices, keeps their future. So never be afraid of sacrificing because you are simply securing your future. Um, I welcome you all, all those who are online, share this. Can we refresh the YouTube so that I make sure it's, uh, it's in sync? Um, I believe that uh, today will be an even better day. Amen. It will be a significantly profound day. A day that will bring a lot of change not only to you but also to me. And I believe that um, the goodness of God will be revealed. So I want you to like this video, share this video, let somebody know that we are up and we are in this. And the Lord will be glorified. Yes. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse number 5. Jeremiah chapter 1 and 5. Jeremiah 1 5. Jer Amen. Jeremiah 1 5. All right, let's hear it. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Uh -huh. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. Mm -hmm. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Mm -hmm. Now, Je uh, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28. Amen. Mm -hmm. And God blessed them and God said unto them, mm -hmm. be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. One more time. And God said and God blessed them and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it mm -hmm. and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. One more time. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Now, I am going to speak to you this morning about destiny. Yes. Amen. Yes. Your destined truth. Yes. Yes. And your destined place of calling. Yes. Now, I am sharing this with you because... It is very important to understand why you are created. And if you don't understand why you are created, then everything that you're doing is vain. Everything that you're doing has no purpose. Everything you're doing has no direction. Why? Because there is a reason and a specific purpose everyone was born for on the earth. When people read about Adam, they assume that Adam was created to simply replenish the earth. That was Adam's job. That was not Adam's destined work on the earth. That was not God's purpose for Adam. You have to remember that God believes in hard work, not hardship. Hard work, there's a difference. What is hardship? Hardship is consistent struggle when you work. You work like an elephant, but the returns are always like an ant. 
you are in what is called hardship. You put in so many hours, but the return does not compare to what you have put in. That is called hardship. That is not hard work. According to God, you should be the worker is worth his wages, meaning that if I work hard, then the return must be uh, uh, similar to what I have put in. Only with God do we go in and he gives us more than we deserve. But in the systems of the world, God designed it to be this way. That what you put in, you get the return. Whatsoever a man sows, so shall he what? Reap. An example, if I take one seed and I put it in, I will get a tree with many fruits. Notice, I worked hard to work on the ground. I worked hard to dig prepare the ground, water it when I put in the seed. So if that seed produces another seed, uh, another one fruit, that is hardship. Because the hours I put watering the ground, the hour I put breaking the ground, means that the return must be quadrupled the seed I put in. So you get a tree that produces more than one fruit, and within each fruit, there is so many seeds that can create a whole garden. That is how God worked our, our work to be like. But the systems of the world wants to profit off your hard work and give you hardship. This is why you need to understand that your work or your job is not your destiny. Uh, uh, you're clapping like you're not really sure. This is the reason why your 9 to 5 is not your destiny. It is not your purpose. It is simply work. Uh, I feel like uh, maybe... Uh, <laughs> Mr. Black, did I step on some toes? <laughs> I don't know if... Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm just trying to make sure that you comprehend what I'm saying. Hardship is a curse, you know. And it's an even worse curse when you don't know that you are under a curse. It means you're not just under a curse, you're bewitched. Wow, 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 wow. That's good. Teach us. Adam was fired from his job, but he was not fired from his destiny. Wow, wow. That's real. He was supposed to dress and keep the garden of God, but that was not his purpose. That is what you do to maintain where you are in. Yes, yes. So God planted a garden eastward of Eden, the Bible says. And God formed man and put, it in him, he put, it, uh, put him in it to dress it and to keep it. Yes. To dress it and to what? Keep it. So, Adam being in the garden, dressing the garden was not his purpose. It was simply his job. Wow. Wow. Many of you are caught up with work and your destiny is dying. I know some people don't like that, but I'm telling you the truth. Your destiny is rotting away. And the more you engage with a job and treat it like destiny, you are wasting the energy and the strength it takes to tackle and accomplish the purpose in which God created you for. That's good. That's good. That's good. You are not created to have money. Come on. Come on. Money is given to you to fulfill a destiny and a purpose. That is why the Bible says money answers. Notice, notice, money is an answer to a question. Money is not for buying things. Money is for answering questions. What is it answering? What were you created for? Money answers how you are going to tackle the destiny that was given to you. Yes, 
But if you treat money like your destiny, you will die and leave it here because money was simply a partner to us to assist you in carrying out what yes. God gave you to do. Yes. An example. Right now, I am here this wonderful morning. I am teaching. People are giving so that the word of God can be spread. But guess what? I was still doing this without people giving. So what, different did the, what difference did the giving do? It just made me do what I was doing in a magnified capacity. But it did not change my purpose and my destiny. It simply enhanced it. That's good. Because now we have ways to broadcast and to send signal in places and do. Notice, unless you are in your destined purpose, money can't even serve you. Mammon will enslave you. When God was in, when God created Adam and put Adam in the garden, there were a few rivers that were running through the garden. One had gold, and the gold of that land was great. Another one gave this, another one gave that. Notice, the rivers were not watering the garden. Because there was a mist that went on the earth to water everything. Yes. Remember, until Genesis chapter 6, rain had never happened. The first time a record of rain came was in Genesis chapter 6. That is why when, uh, when Noah told them, rain is coming, they were like, you're crazy. Water is going to fall from the sky. You are out of your mind. That's good. Is this making sense? Yes. So, so Adam has water in the form of mist. If you go to... Uh, if you go to um, I like going to, uh, what are they called, nurseries where there are plants, because I love to buy plants. In my home, uh, we planted a bunch of olive trees and things like that, like 40-year-old trees, because I'm not waiting for a tree to grow for 40 years. No, I want to enjoy the shade now. So, <laughs> so, so I got a lot of trees in, on my property, and they, a lot. There were trees, but I added a lot more. Now, one thing that you realize in a nursery is that when things are in their conception or they are growing, they are put where the sun is not as hot. They are put in a nursery, right? And then there's a mist that is watering everything. Shh. Water is not pushed on the plants. It's just a nice, gentle kind of thing. So everything is more moist. Actually, if you know the history of the earth, the earth was more humid than it is now. That's why everything was bigger. Even the oxygen level of things that were on earth was different. That's why everything was bigger. That's why we had dinosaurs here. I know Christians don't believe in dinosaurs, which is crazy, but it's in the Bible. Yeah, there are some creatures that are in there. No, this is a real thing. If you're finding the bones, they were here. <laughs> that doesn't mean it's evolution. It means it's creation. No one can prove evolution. It's a theory. You know, it's a theory. Darwin only saw uh, adaptation. He did, he did not see evolution. They put birds on an island and they saw their beaks change because of how they are to eat or whatever in the island. Yeah. That just means adaptation. That is not evolution. Yeah. No, those are two different things. Right now, if we take Mama Rene and relocate her to Sudan, and we get another light-skinned person to be with Mama Rene. Her children, as they continue to be in that atmosphere, and she keeps and they keep birthing each other, there will be much different skin tone. Not because they don't have, they are not red boned Their skin will change to adapt to the climate, because it's really hot. You need a certain skin because they may not be sunblocked. So it's called adaptation. Good. It's not evolution. It's simply to adapt. Just like when you go to the gym and you start lifting and you start working out, the first few weeks your body will suffer because you're breaking it down. Then your body will adapt and adjust yes. to accommodate what you're doing. Yes. Is this making sense? Yes. Yes. I don't know how we got to that, but 
It will make sense in a second. So Adam is in the garden. And there's a mist going around the garden. Watering everything. Because God had not caused it to rain. Now, there are rivers in the garden. But the purpose of the rivers was not to water the garden. In fact, they had no power to sustain the garden. The rivers were given to Adam because it carried resources that at a certain time, he will need gold. At the moment of his creation, nobody knew what gold is. But God knew at a certain point, they will need to use gold. So God already financed what Adam will need for a certain time as he continues in his purpose. I personally believe the gold was for the, uh, 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 for, was for the making of the ark. Because if you know the garden, actually the holies of holies is exactly the dimensions of the garden of Eden. Yes. A hundred percent. Why do you think in the temple there are cherubims? Because there were cherubims in the garden. This was a copy. This is good. This is good. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. Now, but if people started creating things and Adam needed to purchase things, there was already gold available, but that gold was tied to his destiny. Yes. Yes. The gold had nothing to do with him eating because God had already made provision. Yes. All Adam had to do was wake up and go and take what he needs to eat. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's good, that's good. While he maintained the garden, he didn't sustain it, he maintained it because he was sustained by God himself. When it comes to your life, there are two things you need to ask yourself. Am I subduing the earth? Do I have authority? And do I have power? You see, some people love to show power in the place of employment. But that is not power, that is corruption. I'm going to frustrate you and, oh, I don't like you. Oh, you're, 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 you know what? That is not power. That is corruption. That is what we call what? Corruption. That is what we call corruption. True power, true authority, the ability to subdue. Do you know what it means to subdue? It means to create something and to control the marketplace. Be fruitful, multiply, and subdue. Control. Control. If what I am doing does not give me control, That I can fulfill what God created me to do. I have failed. Let me explain a little deeper. What was Adam's purpose? Adam was fired from his job. But his purpose was still intact. Because Adam was created for one thing and one thing only. He wasn't created for the garden. You know that. The garden was created for him. You are not created for your job. Your job was created for you. What Adam was put on the earth, he needed a helper to carry it out. But what was the work he was given to do? Ah. People say, oh, God, you know, Adam was kicked out of the garden and man lost no, must, man entered into sin, but destiny was still there. Yes. Jesus would not die for purposeless things. Yes. Do you realize Jesus came and he said, I did not come for the fallen ones. Yes. 
I did not come for the angels that left their place. He didn't even talk about Lucifer. He was talking about the angels in Genesis 6 that left their place. That gave us Goliath and the crew. Wow. God says, notice from the time God is creating man, Genesis 1, 27, he said, let us make man. And then when he says, and God created he, him, male and female created he, them. And bless them and said, be fruitful and multiply. The declaration of fruitfulness was not given to Adam when he was created. Hmm. Adam was never fruitful until he understood purpose. Adam observed every animal and realized Something is off here. Every animal is created two by two. That is why we have the animals continuing. I'm the only guy that is by himself. Genesis 18. Genesis 2.18, sorry. Genesis 2.18, this is what he says. <laughs> this is what he says. Then the Lord said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Now, here's a problem. God already made the helper. So was this God speaking or was this Adam being spoken to within him? Wow. I'm uh, messing with you now. Because God is created in, creating him male and female. You know, if you don't understand context that you're reading a spiritual book, you think God is creating a solution for Adam's loneliness. No, God already created him with a woman, but he doesn't know that he has a woman. So the Bible is saying, then the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper, right? Fit for him. Verse 19. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was their name thereof. Now there is a problem. How can you come to me and say, it is not good for you to be alone. I will make you a helper. But instead of making you a helper, I'm making animals. <laughs> I know you need a car. I'm going to give you a car. Then instead of giving you a car, I just bring people with nice cars and I say, name them. Wow. <laughs> ah, Lambo. <laughs> Bentley. F Ferrari. <laughs> Porsche. <laughs> Rolls Royce. But... I need a car. Why are you showing me other people's stuff? God was trying to communicate something to Adam. Do you notice something is off? Because until Adam saw animals two by two, when God made animals to come to him, Adam had no consciousness of being with somebody else. Read it. He's not, he's not thinking about being alone. He didn't even have that thought. God provoked him. To see. Can you really look inside my guy? 
Because now there is a problem. Go back to 19. Go to 19. Now look at the problem. God says, it's not good for man to be by himself. I will make him a helper. Then God creates animals from the ground. Right? Yes. Yes. Verse 20, look at this. He makes all this creature. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helpmate for him. Notice, God sent him on an errand (laughs) to realize you are not doing what I want you to do here. You are not picking it up. Now, while he was put in that errand, uh, name them. Adam began to look for destiny. He was only told, name them. But Adam started to find, man, there is no, while I'm naming them, maybe I can find a helper because everybody's two by two. Maybe I will find my helper here. Notice, the reason why you're doing your job is to find destiny. Uh, You're not getting what I'm saying. God gives you something to do so that you can find purpose. So that you can realize, wait, I feel I'm wasting my time here. What am I supposed to really? Let me, let me, let let me talk to my brethren on the other side. I, I don't know if somebody is catching what I'm saying. It's a big problem. When you start looking at other people getting their benefits and stuff, you start saying, ah, ah, we're doing the same thing. The boss is on vacation. I'm here struggling. They are fruitful, but I'm the one just working to make them fruitful. But where is my fruitfulness? Many of you think your fruitfulness is your paycheck. No, that's your sustenance. (laughs) I was talking to a prophet friend of mine last night. He called me late. And we were having a discussion. And I told him, man of God, it is crazy that men of God preach to have a big church. I never desired a big church. I never even thought of it, you know. God showed it to me, but that's never been my pursuit or my agenda. I don't care. If God gave me one soul to teach, I will teach exactly how I am teaching now. I will not teach differently because there are 10 billion people. I will deliver exactly the same way I am doing right now. Nothing is going to change. Absolutely nothing. Why? Because as long as I am where the Lord wants me to be, I am winning. Because true success is achieved when you can tackle your destiny. Not if you can look good for other people to say you're successful. That is why we see people who are blessed financially but they are not fulfilled why you have money you have this you have that but you are so unfulfilled the reason why i have so much energy to work listen i am a workhorse i can teach all day i have no problem doing it whatsoever do you know why i found my purpose so there is a strength that is carrying me to fulfill what God gave me to do. I am not struggling to teach. I know pastors who, man, they have to have a study for a few days to know what they are going to preach. Notice, they are preaching their study. They are not preaching what God is saying. My study is not God's word to you. My study is for me to understand and to comprehend. For me. I don't teach you what I am interested in. I teach you what God is saying. That is the way the Lord taught me. 
And that is the work of a prophet. A prophet doesn't speak unless God is speaking. So should a teacher also. A teacher can teach you the fundamentals of Christianity. What it takes to walk with God and to be with God. But for him to give you what God wants. Because what you would teach somebody in 1585 is not what you would teach in 2024. It would be different. Same word. The word won't change, but what they need will be different. You know, I always give an example. And I always say, think about it like this. Our fathers and our mothers before us, they never had to answer if somebody changes their body, not transitions, changes their, themselves outwardly, will they still go to heaven? They couldn't answer that because that wasn't a reality. It wasn't something that was being peddled by the government, by schools, by people, whereby you are commanded to call people what they want you to call. It's crazy. But we know it is diabolical in nature because if I, uh, you know, you have to respect somebody, yet respect is earned. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good. Mm-hmm. If you call me what I don't want you to call me, you, it is violence. I thought violence was beating you up. Right. and uh, We are confusing. Words no longer mean what they used to mean. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Now, the issue is, if this situation or one person was taken to 1585, everyone will be confused. Pastor will say, ah, you're going to hell. But our generation needs to be much more profound in the knowledge of God. Now, there are questions that people need to ask, because remember, in 1855, and I'm going, I'm exaggerating, but think about it. The church had a problem with women wearing pants. You're going to hell. You put on makeup. Oh, you damned. Jezebel. Then you realize uh, makeup doesn't take you to heaven or to hell. (laughs) Pants didn't change anything that you are. They are just comfortable. No pastor is preaching against those things. There are still people who want to dress like Mother Teresa and it's okay. (laughs) White thing on their head wrapped up, you know wearing big old robes and it's cool doesn't change anything you may feel good about yourself but it doesn't change anything it really doesn't spiritually it doesn't matter no a hundred percent it doesn't matter it doesn't matter at all but notice this generation is forced to answer questions that our forefathers never had to answer then now you have to ask different questions. Did Jesus die to save our bodies? Or did he die to save our soul? So if somebody changed themselves since they were a child, they were given puberty, pu- uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, blockers, uh, what is it called? Puberty blocker, hormone blockers and all that stuff to make them change and they actually physically change. You can't change your soul, you can't change your spirit. Still same person. Whether it's a man, woman, you can't really. I'm sorry, you can't. Your outward appearance will change. That's why you need people to validate it. Because if it was a genuine change, you wouldn't need validation. Are you getting what I'm saying? The validation part. But if that person truly sees that, man, you know what? I need to come to the Lord and this is not the way. But they can't change anything. Body parts were already chopped off. Things were already changed. Is that person going to get damned? Absolutely not. But our forefathers will say, no, yes, you are getting damned. How could you? You know, the Bible simply says, is it not shame for a man to have long hair? People don't know the context. But he never said it's a sin, you know. But everybody treats it like it's a sin. 
It is just the generation we are in. People have matured to say, if God will really look at me crazy because of my hair, that he put on my head to grow. What if I didn't have anything to cut my hair and I was in the bush? So my hair grows a masina. Do you understand what I'm saying? But I'm trying to show you that there are questions they never had to answer. But the time you're in forced you to answer them and to realize like without even reading the word of God, uh, what has that got to do with anything? Are, are you getting what I'm saying? So the situation you're in is supposed to force you to answer certain questions. The work you're doing is supposed to force you to answer certain questions. Why? Why, 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 why? You need to answer questions. I'm going to use my, my apostle and bishop as an example. My favorite man on earth is Apostle Gershon. Sweetest, sweetest teddy bear of a man that you ever know. I understood from God, and I'm telling you the honest truth. I understood from God that what God gave me to do will push my apostle, who is called by God, to do and to be effective in what God gave him to do. Amen. I knew that God is my, God is my witness. That is why I never sought for any associate pastor ever in my life. I pointed him. Why was that? Because of one simple truth. God had always given him a burden for prayer. An apostle has, uh, 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 has a powerful ministry that was called Big Power in Prayer. And Apostle fought for that vision. I was like, Apostle came. He was like, I have to do this. <laughs> Apostle, it is not the title in my spirit. You just need to be where your gift can be seen and people can cling to it and get freedom. Amen. Amen. Then finally, when God spoke to Apostle, he realized, ah, now nah, I'm supposed to be doing this. You know, Apostle hasn't changed what he's doing. Apostle, am I lying? He's doing the exact things that he has always done. Apostle, please, they will think I'm lying. Maybe I'm... No, he has never changed what he's doing. It's true, Papa. Apostle still prays the same. He's still his skill to manage and to... And to, to um, what is the corporate word you always use, Apostle? I forget. <laughs> to do inventory and to follow up and all those things. He's still using them now. But why is it more profitable now to men and to himself that there is a purpose, there is a, there is a fulfilling, there is a fulfilling, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Completion within his inner man. That apostle can wake up and go and do what he needs to do. Counsel people, teach if he has to sit in the office, deliberate with Benny and do their thing, whatever they do, I don't know. But do all these things is because of one thing. From the day I've known apostle, apostle prays just like this. I, I could have even acted it now, but I will spare him. <laughs> exactly the same thing. The man of God has never changed. But being put in the correct location. Yeah, I met, when I told Apostle, I told Apostle, Apostle, quit everything. Leave it. He was doing corporate stuff. He was hustling. He was doing all this. But he still has to do his ministry prayer. I said, Apostle, trust me. If you follow me, you won't need any of those things. Amen. God will lay it at your feet. Notice. I told the man of God I spoke to yesterday, I told him this, I said, man of God, if a church is lacking, they are not doing God's purpose. They are doing their own mission. <laughs> if a church has to look for a way to recruit people, 
Yeah, call that person to come to our church. Uh, get that person that is skilled. God never called you to do what you're doing. Do you realize <laughs> all the media guys that we have, we have people that we have hired. But there are people who are skilled from day one that were in my living room. I didn't know. Amen. Esther was always in my living room. Amen. My son Brandon Yabro was always in my living room. Everyone that is serving and doing all, Luke was in my living room. Musa was watching online waiting for his moment to come so that he can come. All these guys were always in the... I, then you discover this one went to school for this, this one. Notice, I never outsourced my leaders. I'm trying to open your eyes to see something. I never outsourced any of my leaders. When I discovered what they do, I said, hmm. Is when I was like, ah, uh, Esther, we're about to get this building thing. I need you to drop everything in New York and come. She said, yes, Father, I've been waiting for this. She quit everything, packed up everything, flew in. One, I'll tell you this. Esther Roses, you know you have, you know, come, come give me a, a young five. Don't change the camera. Your energy level actually almost matches mine. You know, I'll give you that. You, you're solid, you know what I mean? Come on, Esther Roses. Come on, Esther Roses. Let's go. <laughs> uh, Esther can grind. Uh, Esther is a hard worker because I remember she landed. She literally landed. Went and dropped off things and came immediately, started setting lights and whatever. So what are we doing? How are we filming? And I, I was like, yeah. <laughs> immediately, instantly, she didn't wait. So can we this? No, no, no. My guy's hands were already working. You see, what I'm trying to explain to you is this. Adam's purpose was within himself. Adam was the only human being that marriage was his destiny. Because if the man does not have a woman, we don't get created. His purpose was not the garden. His purpose was to multiply, but to create a people that will have dominion, control, and authority over the earth. How was he going to control the whole earth by himself? He needed to duplicate himself, but the answer was with him. When he realized that he could find no helper, God didn't tell him you need a helper. God just put him in a situation where he realized, man, it's not good for me to be alone. He wasn't lonely. He just realized, man, I could have done this faster. So God said, I will give you a helper. But notice, Adam was fired from his job. So if Eve's purpose was to help in gardening, then they all lost their destiny. Uh, Apostle, am I communicating? Adam had the funnest job. <laughs> Some of you missed it. He had the best job. He only had to do one thing. <laughs> Produce a people of power. That's it. That is why you find that when they are being kicked out of the garden... There is a curse pronounced on Adam. Not directly to Adam though. Because the man and the woman were not cursed by God. <coughs> they were not cursed. Because what God blesses he cannot curse. Yes. What God did. was cursed the ground that they were going to subdue. Wow. He didn't curse him. He said, Adam, cursed is the ground for your sake. Every time you see thorns, it's the curse of Adam. When God created things, there were no thorns. Thorns are a symbol of hardship. That is why when Jesus our Lord was going on the cross... 
before he was put on the cross, there was something that was put on his head. Thorns and thistles were put on his head as a crown. And he bled. Jesus by the crown took away hardship that is supposed to be in the field of your calling. I'm, I'm teaching the wrong people. You're teaching. God told Adam, Cursed is the ground for your sake. By the sweat of thy brows shall you eat. Jesus comes and puts on the crown of thorns. And they push it into him. Blood and sweat trickles. Many of you right now, you're facing hardship because you're on a cursed ground. You are not in the place of destiny. If you enter in the place of destiny, let me, let me talk to the people online. You're talking to when us. you enter the place of destiny, hardship cannot exist because Jesus has already taken the hardship. That's why he said, come to me if you're burdened. And I will give you rest for your soul. Take my yoke upon yourselves. For it is what? Easy. Why is it easy? Because Jesus came to do the same thing Adam came to do. Because Adam failed in the spiritual part. He succeeded in the physical part. But he failed spiritually. He succeeded by producing people. But he produced people with defect of sin. So Jesus comes and gives birth to a new people spiritually. So you are born again so that you can be completely the way God wanted you to be in the beginning. So Jesus also came for one purpose. To birth. That's it. 33 years was to birth. A new creation. That's it. And when he was done with that, he was out. So our spiritual destiny yes. is restored. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. wow. Jeremiah 1.5 says it clearly. Before you are in your mother's womb, I knew you. Not I know you. Knew is past tense. Yeah. We are all the past to God. Uh, let me read it. Bring it back up, Musa. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. So before there was any substance of you, wow. you are known. That's why you are formed. Wow. Notice he didn't say I created you in your mother's womb. He said I formed you. Amen. You are already with me. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. I sanctified you. You are already sanctified. Because you are created for a purpose. To be sanctified and to be separated means that you are created for a special assignment. You see, in today's world, you are born, you enter the systems of the world like we spoke about. Your duty is to have a family, buy properties, die, and your family keeps that property and you continue. Notice, you're not doing anything except your family. Mm. You have failed. <clears throat> Failure. In the eyes of people, they'll be like, oh man, you did great. And no, you didn't. On the last day, that counts for nothing. Mm. Counts for absolutely nothing. Did you birth a people that will carry out an assignment from God? Or did you birth a people that will just work on the earth, enjoy the benefits of the earth, keep the company you created, and it continues on? You failed. Why are you having a hard time with money right now? Not everyone, but most people. 
one thing. You have taken your job to be your destiny. <clears throat> when the Lord Jesus came, When the Lord Jesus came, he went to Matthew, the tax collector, and said, my guy, you've had that career in taxes. That is not your calling. Follow me. The reason why Matthew dropped everything is because he found what he was actually born to do. Amen. I am not telling you to quit your job. I am telling you to look inside yourself because remember, the deep calleth unto the deep. Every situation you are in, it is because it is a setup for something. Jesus was born in a carpenter's house. And the word carpenter is actually used loosely. Because what it was really, he was the son of a handyman. The word carpenter there is used loosely. <laughs> Jesus' dad was a handyman. Whatever I can fix, whatever I can do. Because at that time, to be a carpenter was actually a respected profession. People needed more woodwork. At that time, for sure. But he was a carpenter. Uh, he was a son of a handyman. He was undermined. But yet he was the savior. You are not defined by where you start. Where you start is strategic by God yes. Yes. to open your eyes Amen. to make you realize why you are here. Yes. When you have nothing, you have the opportunity to see everything. Yes. I'll say that one more time. When you have nothing, you are able to see everything and observe everything. When you have a lot of things in your hands, it can become more of a distraction than a purpose. One thing that I remember I was yesterday I was hanging out with my with my sister Natasha and um the mother of uh, Rio and Maro and Lawi my niece my niece and uh, nephews and we were hanging out and we were talking and she was like do you remember saying all these things that you're doing right now when you had not even started anything I remember my friend, I spoke about him yesterday. I was actually supposed to see him yesterday. My day just went upside down. Uh, uh, Prince, he told me the same thing. I was like, bro, don't you remember prophesying all these things? I don't even remember talking to him about it. The only one I remember talking to was Mike. Because he was always with me when I was praying and I was seeking God and things like that. But he was like, bro, you told me all these things. You prophesied all these things. I remember it. Where you're going has always been on your lips. That's so good. No, you didn't hear what I said. Mm. Hmm. Let me show you something. <laughs> uh, 
Psalms 45 verse 1. Psalms 45 verse 1. Amen. Uh-huh. My heart is indicting a good matter. Uh-huh. I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. <laughs> Stop right there. <laughs> Start over. Please read it with some extra spice, sugar, and stuff. And everything nice. One, two, three. <laughs> My heart is indicting a good matter. Mm-hmm. I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. Mm-hmm. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Stop right there. Musa, don't take my verse too quickly. My heart is indicting a good matter. I am conceiving good things. I speak of things which I have made. The car, the house, you can make it. <laughs> Touching the king. But those are not destiny. Amen. I was telling the man of God yesterday, I said, you know, uh, pastors are really impressed with, oh, I, I got a 10,000 breakthrough. What is 10,000? It's good. You can pay rent. You can, you can sustain you maybe three months in today's climate. Maybe. Okay, okay, guys, we are in LA. It's not everywhere is like this. In this climate here, at least maybe two, maybe two months. Maybe two months. Maybe two months. That's not a breakthrough. That's just sustenance. Oh, oh, oh I, just, I just got a thousand dollar breakthrough. Ha. You go into roughs, you come out, it's done. Are you clapping like I'm not telling you the truth? Can we speak the truth? Speak the truth, Papa. Yeah, it's shocking. Hey, you look and you say, now nah, wow, you say, Jesus. <laughs> Money is just flo- What is happening? You look, have you looked at the price of milk and bread? It's actually like a... Eh? If you guys vote wrong this time, <laughs> let me sip my water. <laughs> Go put gas, you're like, hey. That's not, that's not really, uh, it's not really transformative. It's a band aid. It's a band aid. The squeezing you're feeling right now is because there is something inside of you God is trying to force you to look into so that it comes out. The squeezing is to make you start thinking. Because where you will go, the map of where you're going is in your lips. It's actually in your lips. When Adam found Eve, that's when God said, Be, God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Yeah. Notice what he declared in the spirit. He only declared in the physical when he found Eve. So the pronunciation of God's blessing doesn't come until Until you are restored in the place of destiny. The destiny of a man is tied into the problems you will solve for humanity. You are created to live 
people's lives and people's hearts better than you found it. Impact of souls and lives is where your destiny is supposed to be tied to. So what I do must have the ability not only to help somebody spiritually first because when you help somebody spiritually primarily if everything around their life dies because they have the spirit of life everything will come alive again but if you give them fish and bread but you never aided them spiritually when fish and bread disappears they will go back to the life they used to have easily they will return to exactly where they came from quickly well you know when i used to do this i used to have a lot more man this is us you know what god will understand they will go right back why they were never changed inside they were not changed inside they were not changed. They were not changed. There was no change. There was provision without change. Jesus feeds the 5,000, not counting men and women, uh, not counting women and children. And Jesus goes and dodges them and goes somewhere else. In the morning, they are looking for Jesus. Looking for him, they said, Lord, where did you go? Because if you read, you realize that the disciples wanted them to find food before evening came. So after they ate, they forgot about the preaching, they went to sleep. And Jesus relocated. They didn't even know Jesus left them. When the morning came, they said, Jesus, they looked for him. Then they found them and said, Lord, we have been looking for you everywhere. <laughs> Jesus said, you're not looking for me. You want bread. You want bread. They're like, no, we, what are you talking about? I said, what I want to really give you that will give you life, you don't want it. Yeah. Then they started questioning him. They started questioning him. Uh, show us then signs. Show us then. Jesus said, um, <laughs> I am, my flesh is true meat. My blood is true drink. Unless you eat me and drink me, you have no life. Wow. They're like these guys are wizard. He is demon possessed. They left. So everything he was preaching to them, they never heard. They came for miracle. They came for deliverance. And they came for bread. I don't know if somebody can hear me. Yes. Esther, shake your phone, please. I, I don't know if somebody can hear me. They said, this guy is demon possessed. They all left. And Jesus turned and he looked at his disciples. They were still there. He said, are you going to leave me also? They said, Lord, where would we go? Who else has the words of life? Amen. You see, because those people wanted bread, when Jesus said, unless you eat me and drink me, they thought he was talking about physical consumption. Because they were not spiritually enlightened when he was speaking, they did not listen. The only ones that were listening were his disciples. Amen. That is why they never left. Amen. That is why I'm never surprised when people say, oh, you know, I used to go to that church and I just felt something was off and then I walked away. You never listened to me. Amen. You know, he said, I, he usually points people to himself. You absolutely have never listened to me. Mama Renee has been around since 2016, 2015, 16, 17. 
like about since 2017. This is a woman of God that has worked with God for years. You think she's going to sit somewhere where somebody is pointing people to himself? Maki Kagechi has been with me for almost 2016, 2017, around that same time too. Until this day she's been here. Apostle, you know, to this day. <laughs> He's been there since I came to this country in 2005. But you see, that's what happens when you watch somebody or you follow something for something else, yet they are here to give you destiny. Yes, 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 yes. To point you back to your destiny. To establish you in the purposes of God. The guys who demonize me, go look at their views and look at my views. Why aren't people listening to you? You're not saying what God wanted you to say. Amen. You are preaching lovey yes. instead of preaching Jesus. Amen. No one is coming to listen to you talk about another man. We want to hear about Jesus. Amen. We want Jesus Christ. I don't care what people are doing. There will always be fake people. There will always be false people. I don't care. Give me Jesus so that I may have the light. So that I may know who is from God, who is not. Don't tell me about people. Tell me about Jesus. So that when I look at a man, I look at a woman. That I may see my Lord. If I don't see my Lord, I know they are not one of us. Not feelings. I felt like, look at what they did. It doesn't matter. That is how you can be distracted out of your calling and your purpose. Very easily. Very easily. Very easily. Very easily. Within the workplace you are in, start to open your eyes and ask yourself, what is the difference between me and this man? What is the difference between me and this woman? That is not to undermine anyone because we never undermine anyone. It's a sin to undermine people. But start asking yourself, what, am I sub what are they doing that I haven't done? And in fact, they are not even leading people to Christ. God is using them for me to have food on my table, yes. But life is more than this. When you start questioning things, you start thinking, what can I do to solve problems? Because wealth comes because of solving problems. Wealth comes because you have solved a problem. Anyone who does not solve problems will never be wealthy. Unless you are a thief, a murderer, or a corrupt person. And you will never enjoy the fruits of that anyway because they are not fruits. That's death you are consuming. I'll give you one of the things that will help you to see. You see through your gifting. And how do you know your gifting? What irritates you the most? What do you see that irritates you the most? Why is it that you're the only one who can see it and other people can see it? I'm not talking about quick uh, or get rich quick schemes. See, like all of a sudden again, everybody's a crypto expert. Because Bitcoin has gone up. Everybody's like, whoa, trading was crazy today. We are we? All of a sudden again, people are, are crypto experts. Now, I have nothing against crypto. It's amazing. But we all know you're not an expert. Why are you posting what... Do you see Bill Gates posting what he bought, what he did? No, nobody's doing that that actually is doing it. That's how we know that it's not really... It's not really your thing. This is not an attack. It's just honesty. Think about it. You posting what you made. You just gave the enemy what to come after. Somebody will target you.
Are, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. There are people who are experts and there are people who are not experts. Experts that post their thing is because they want to sell you a course. Yep. <laughs> they want to make money off crypto and you. How do I know? How do I know? Esther, again. How do I know? How do I know? My destined place is that when I look at that location, I see things how they should be. When I look at people's hair, I'm just like, why is their hair looking so bad? <laughs> why couldn't they just do this? Why couldn't they? Ah, that lineup kind of crooked, man. Golly. Who's, who's messing your hair line up? Ah, why is it, man? All right, those, those are kind of fire. Okay, okay. Those, those, those braids are on point. Okay, you know. Why are you picking up all these things? Why is it that for you, hair, 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 you're probably supposed to solve an issue in the beauty industry? That's so good. That's so good. Because me, I don't see people's nails done. I can't see it. Unless you tell me, do you see my nails? I can't. <laughs> Auntie Benz always does that. <laughs> if you don't tell me that, I'm not sitting there looking at, oh, your nails look, okay, okay. I don't care. I don't see your shoes. I don't, me, I just see the person. Why? Because my calling is to see beyond the outward man, is to see people's hearts. Amen. That's good. So I don't look at people based on what is outside. Amen. Nor does it impress me. Yes. Is that making sense? Yes. You look at people, you're like, hey man, if, they had, if this woman ate like this, that blood sugar will be fixed. If this man did this, this would be, man, you don't need to be that heavy. This is just going to cause you problems. Notice, you are supposed to be in some nutritionist kind of sector to solve issues of people in a certain place. It's very, you know, it's very simple. What problems do you see? Because gifts are only given to solve problems. Yes. That is the difference between a magician, somebody with magic tricks, and a prophet. There are these people who are called uh, um, mentalists. I, I don't know if you've ever seen a mentalist. I'm hearing Kana JT's voice. Is that you? Oh, okay, 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 okay. Oh, so it's you. I, I know you. I was like, hmm, I know that. Hmm. <laughs> so there are guys called mentalists. And a mentalist will tell you, okay, think about the name of your childhood friend, Tony. You're like, oh my God, how did you do that? It's called cold reading. It's called cold reading. It's, there's no spirituality there. Zero. It's not spirituality. Do you know how the FBI know that you're lying or the CIA? They are trained in cold reading. They know what you do, what your body says when you're lying. They know how to measure ah, you're not telling the truth. They know. It's called cold reading. Why do I need you to think of it before I tell you? Prophecy, you, I'll just tell you, oh, your childhood friend is this, you used to live in this address, this and this and this. It's different. Why? Because it is specific and it's sharp because its duty is to bring you from the place of darkness into the light, to know the mind of God concerning your life. No mentalist will tell you your destiny, you know. Then you be, oh my God, they read minds. How did you do that? Oh. <laughs> Nobody goes to a mentalist and say, my mother is sick. 
What can we do? What is God saying they can't? They say, think of your childhood friend. Why am I saying this to you? Because some of you think, you know, when the day I said, oh, those who have insomnia, and I said, come in front, and they came in front, and I said, sleep, and people fell down, and people were snoring in church. And I said, this is spiritual NyQuil. They said, there's no uh, NyQuil anointing. <laughs> spiritual NyQuil. That's hypnosis. Huh. How you don't believe in the power of God? You've been watching too many mentalists. Now, are you getting what I'm saying? I didn't say, look at me, one, two, two, and I suggest. <laughs> Nothing like I just say, okay, sleep. Boom. Eh? There was no, okay, look at me, look at me, okay, okay. <laughs> so, my gifting makes me look at you. And to hear God's voice concerning you and where you're going. Your gift will also make you look at people and see different. Your gift may make you look at buildings and see something different. Your gift will make you look at countries and see different. Gifts solve problems they don't entertain. I'm going to say it one more time. Gifts solve problems they do not entertain. Gifts solve problems they don't entertain. They bring joy. They bring happiness because of what God has done. But they do not entertain Adam's eyes were opened when he looked at animals he realized he's not supposed to be alone when you look at somebody with wealth don't envy their wealth you need to realize there should be this amount in my account There is something my father told me I will never forget. My father and my prophet told me this. And this is prophet passion. He told me this. And I reminded him of this story and he was really shocked. A few years ago, we went to visit Pastor Benny Hinn. And we were still in victory. We went to visit Pastor Benny. Pastor Benny loves, man, he's a good man. I spent a lot of time with the old man. Amen. And uh, I went to see him and we were with, uh, with my father. But when we got, this is when he still had the building in uh, Anaheim, I think. Uh, is, it, is it, where is it? It's not, it's, huh? No, 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 it wasn't Orange County. Where is it? Huh? No, 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 no. I, Santa Ana. It's around that side. Yeah, it's on that side. I can't remember exactly where, but it's around that side, Santa Ana area. And um, we were together, and when we arrived to his network where he would do all his services online, when we got to that place, I remember standing there and looking, and I'm like, man, this man of God has worked. But I wasn't really thinking much. I was just like, wow, this is a lovely place, this, this. We walked through the doors. There was pictures of Catherine Coleman and all these other amazing crusades that he had done. And my father looked at me and he said, what are you seeing right now? I said, man, this building is amazing. He said, no. What are you seeing right now? I said, no, this, this place is amazing said, no, you are seeing the evidence of his gift. Amen. Then he asked me, what does he have that you don't have? I said, well, he 
he has this and this and this. He said, no. You have the same exact thing. You just have not seen what your gift can produce. Yeah. When you focus on souls, when you focus on souls, when you put your sight on God and your desire is to build people, the evidence of your gift will be a memorial in buildings. This was the first sign that God told me I need to get out of victory. This is before scandemic, sorry, pandemic. Before that. Uh, hmm. Okay. Now I started looking at ministries and comparing their impact. Then I started realizing others are in debt, some are in this, and some had what they had and they had no debt, nothing, and they were helping people. My whole outlook changed. By the time I had my encounter with Father Abraham, I was already, my view on buildings was different. Because all I cared for is if we gather and pray, we are good. Now when you come to this place, Revelation Church, it is evidence of my gift. That's true. 100%. Ah, JT, am I lying? It's 100% true. It's the evidence of my gift. Yes. But I realized when I went to, when I did this, I was like, okay, this is cool, but my satisfaction is, is not there because my desire is to do more for God. Yes. I went to South Korea and I was with my son Charles and his spiritual children was in Korea and I I went to see Dr. Yang Gi Cho. I was with my wife. We went to see Dr. Yang Gi Cho's church. I wanted to go and pray there. When I got there and I saw what this man, he has the biggest active member church in the world. And the man is not even here anymore. It's crazy. He has over a million active members. And when I say active members, I'm talking about people who are tithing and giving wow. to the work of God. It's crazy. It shows the history of how they started five people. It turned to 10,000. It turned to 500,000. It turned just like, ah. I went and I saw what this man had done. I realized I haven't even started. No, it's the truth. I filmed it. I have it. I'm supposed to post it at some point, but I just couldn't believe how many memorials he erected for God, churches he erected for God, and how many uh, um, souls were being saved, how people were coming to fast and seek God's face. I was actually shocked. I could not believe what this man had done. When I said this is evidence of my gift, I am not talking about prophecy. I am talking about the message God gave me. Amen. To bring people out of a certain place and to take them to a certain place. I'm not talking about prophecy. Gifts, the other gifts, spiritual gifts only edify the church. They strengthen it. They don't build it. I know a lot of young prophets are, ah, if I could just prophesy, my church will be big. You're wrong. These gifts only sustain. They strengthen. They don't build. If you notice, you go on YouTube right now on my channel. I have almost 2,000 teachings. I think we are like shy two uh, or 300 to be 2,000 teachings. If you go to people's people, very few people can have 2,000 teachings. Yes. Just pure teaching. Yes. Yes. It's crazy. Yes. But I feel like I haven't even taught the things that I actually want to teach. Yes. Why? Because my desire is always to serve and feed the people of God. So people who follow me, they don't follow me because of a gift. They may be, see the gift and be shocked and follow up and realize, man, 
there's only one thing I always hear, and this is what I love to hear. People always say, man, you know, the first time I saw you, I was like, what's this? My greatest mistake was listening for five minutes. Because the next time I realized I had already watched four videos. <laughs> and I kept listening and I kept listening and I kept listening. And yes. notice what touched them was not the pro. I do have prophecy videos. They are not many. It's that meat, that steak. Yes. So what am I telling you? In short, you see through your gift. Don't try to wear other people's glasses. Don't try to see through other people's eyes. See through your own eyes because you are calibrated to see uniquely. There are people who may have a similar lens. That just means you need to be more innovative than them. I'm going to finish with this. I went to Paris. JT, did you go with me to Paris? I know Lee went with me to Paris. Were you with me in Paris? Were you? It was Lee and uh, Todd. Todd and who else? Andrew was with us. Was, and who, was there one more person? It was, just, it was just five of us? James, yeah. JD was with us. And I've been to Paris a few times. And we are walking around the city. And as we are walking around the city, I noticed like all foreigners were kind of doing, not all, but the foreigners that were in the streets were doing exactly the same thing. All of them were selling corn and things like that, you know, grilling in the streets and that kind of thing. But every turn you took, it was the exact same things they were all grilling. So if I miss one, it's okay, I can get the next one. Because at every turn and every corner, it's exactly the same thing. I told Andrew, I said, this is how poverty looks like. Amen. You just want to survive. None of them thought, yo, let me do this and do this and build this and do this so that mine can be this. You are not innovative, then it just levels the ground. All of you, you are just depending on who, who is lucky, whoever has a crowd on that day. There's no innovation. If you go to all fruit stands, exactly the same. Same cup, same, you know, umbrella, <laughs> same flavor, same everything. So if you don't, if you miss one, you are guaranteed to get what? Then another one. Same exact thing. So be more innovative. Yes. Be more innovative. Be more innovative. Think outside of where you are. Think about when you start thinking about uh, by this time, by this time, where will I be? How will I build this? Then you start evolving. You have to remember every business has a lifespan of five years. On the seventh year, you have to change your business model. If you don't switch up by the seventh year, by the tenth year, you have expired. Somebody else will overtake you. It will be the beginning of the death of whatever you are doing. Just starts to die. Boom, 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 boom. God has the ability to give us innovation. God has the ability to give us ideas. He's able to put things in us that we can advance and do what he wants us to do. It's possible. I want you to stand. We're going to pray. Yes. Look at this man of God. He has a newborn baby and he's here helping us. You are different, sir. You are different. 
you are different. Are, are you ready? Yes. Lift your hands to the king. Tell the Lord to change your vision, to restore it to the place of your calling, that you may see as he called you to see. Lift your voice and pray. 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 Lift your voice. Lift your voice, lift your voice. Lift your voice. 